Hello and welcome. I'm Gohar Raza and you are watching Eureka. Yakin karna to hai hi mushkil. Ye sochna bhi sahel nahi hai ki waqt aisa bhi tha kabhi jab ye waqt paida nahi hua tha. It's difficult to believe but it's all the more difficult to imagine that there was a time when time was not born. However, the big bang happened. time and space were born physicists in particular and scientists in general have worked and bothered for centuries now about time mass and space time is one of the most difficult things to understand the standards have changed over centuries the accuracies have changed and the clock that was developed has completely changed in the model world the accuracies that are required to run a life today are mind boggling a common citizen may not know what is happening within the laboratories in order to discuss and throw some light on how complex the study of time is we have a special guest today dr de welcome to rajya sabha channel and eureka let's begin from the beginning of the time you have uh, produced a very wonderful beautiful graph that how the accuracies have changed over millennia would you like to talk about that yeah sure Uh, so let me begin with your uh, first introduction, like how the time started. In fact, so to best of my knowledge, actually it's not known that uh, how why the first requirement of the time in the world came. To best of our knowledge, it's like it started from tolling a bell in a monastery, and from there different a- applications came over like several hundreds of years, and then accuracies required accuracies of the clocks. become much and much and much better so today the in daily life let's say each of us have mobile phones and there there are small ic's chips which is uh, is a gps communication what it does and it requires an accuracy of nanoseconds which we don't realize many times at the moment and to maintain this kind of accuracy are you saying that each computer and each cell phone has a clock which has an accuracy and without that it may not be able to work yes absolutely so it has an ic which a chip which collects the clock from satellites from gps communications and that is synchronized with all other uh, uh, communication systems and that's how it works and it requires an accuracy of better than nanosecond nowadays and it needs to be much better in coming days because the technology is improving every day to maintain this kind of accuracy in global we require much better standards in time and the global standard or the primary frequency standard in scientist language is uh, defined by the splitting of two ground state of uh, of uh, cesium atoms and that has been measured very accurately with subhertz accuracy and that gives a precise frequency or time standards on an accuracy of 10 to the minus 15 one part in 10 to the power 15 and as you said that we need much much better frequency standard in coming days we will in india also will have the optical frequency standard which will be two orders or three orders of magnitude better compared to the current standard to a common citizen this doesn't make sense True. Nano is ten raised to the power minus nine, mm-hmm. which is one second divided by one followed by nine zeros, and if they are followed by fourteen zeros or fifteen zeros or eighteen zeros, as you are talking about, it doesn't make sense. Why do we require that? Yeah. So uh, first of all, the requirement is. let's say divide it in two parts one is the technology the applications and other one other part is exploring fundamentals of sciences which again have an uh, 
implication of the technology. It is like a vice versa process. So, in the technological sectors, as you said, for a common man, for our daily life, we might not use like uh, very, very precisely timing systems. But on the other hand, let us say you want to place a satellite very accurately in their orbits and that requires a very, very precise timing systems better than like uh, let us say nanoseconds or so. But that will also have an impact on your daily life like the way we are watching the TV channels or satellite links, uh, international trades, the banking systems and etc. which works on the satellite links. So, these also has an implication of this. And for all this, uh, the entire globe time system has to be synchronized. Yes, exactly. And synchronized to the level where it is mind boggling, it is 10 raised to the power minus 15, that kind of order. Yeah, may not be the requirement at this moment is 10 to the power 5 minus 15, but the point that we have to, de we have developed 10 to the power minus 15 clock already in India is that that is the primary international frequency standards. And you are talking about a clock that is constructed by National Physical Laboratory and your group. Yes, uh, so that has been constructed by… About uh, two years back. About two years back it started working and it was mostly developed by Dr. Amita Hosen Gupta in National Physical Laboratory. He took uh, initiative and the other people also worked. And now we have started working to develop a much better clock which will be 10 to the minus 17 or 18 range. That How much time did it take to synchronize with the international clock system? So, uh, let me go one step back rather than saying how much time it took to uh, build the synchronization systems, it actually takes no time. Once you have the clock running, then you can synchronize within few days of work. But the time to, uh, to develop such a clock, it takes quite some time. It takes like, uh, well, depends on how much manpower you have, how much funding you have, but let us say in a ballpark, it takes several years like 5 to 6 years, 7 years, 10 years depending on all these other factors. And the main thing is most of the things are commercially not available. Only very few things are commercially available and rest of the 90 percent or 95 percent things you have to think, you have to design, you have to fabricate, taste and then redesign and finally you have to put them together so that everything works together. And that process takes lot of time and that took for example to develop the last, uh, the fountain clock which is already operating at this moment, several years. And the optical clock what we are discussing today, that is I would say 10 times much complicated compared to the fountain clock what we already have in India. So, it will take uh, quite some time, but I would say that we already have some experience from developing the first clock. So, it would not take like another 50 years, but maybe another 6-7 years. That's later. just wonderful. I have to take a break. Don't go anywhere. The discussion will continue. Welcome back. Dr. Dev, you were discussing that in order to develop a clock of this sophistication, you require hell of a lot of time, effort, energy, money, etc. Why is it important to develop such a clock? We could uh, maybe use uh, the French clock where the hub of the time is as yeah. far as globe is concerned. Yeah. So, uh, so that means we have to trust our friends which this is a strategic thing. I mean this has an application in defense, this has an application in space, this has an application in many other strategic sectors directly. So, tomorrow you do not know that what will happen. So, it could be that we will not, we will not be allowed to use the clocks from other continents, other countries. So, it is very important, it is very important to develop our own clock system. Are you saying that if somebody is given responsible, a responsibility of maintaining our time, then they will also have uh, upper hand in a strategic sector? They can temper with uh, our uh, missile system or satellite system or and they can interfere with that or determine what kind of activities we do? Actually, I am saying it other way around like let us say we rely on the clock of as you said from our one of our friend uh, country. 
but that means to send our own uh, aircrafts or missiles, we have to be, we will be dependent on their clocks. But tomorrow if they say no, we will not, be, you are not allowed to use our clock, that means even though we have an aircraft that will not be able, we will not be able to use them. Even though you, you will have our own uh, communication systems or the India is developing the uh, IRNSS, our own uh, navigation systems, will, this will not be useful if we do not have our own clock system. National Physical Laboratory was one of the first laboratories that CSIR developed. And uh, would you give credit to our forefathers, the political and uh, scientific leadership of that time that they thought that there should be a standard division within National Physical Laboratory and you are a part of that. Maintaining time for the nation mm. is one of the mandates of CSIR absolutely, and absolutely. National Physical Laboratory. Absolutely. I think it's a remarkable that at that time, just immediately after independence, that our uh, ancestors, they have thought about that this is the most important part in the country to run it in a long term. I mean, that's why today, I mean, there are only 10 fountains which are operational in the entire world, 10 good fountains, let's say, and India has one of them. It's remarkable. And let's say we would have thought the same thing from last five years ago, then we would not You're talking be... about fountain clocks. Yes. Right. So atomic then, clocks are available. The commercial atomic commercial. clocks are available, but they have an accuracy of 10 to the minus 13, not 10 to the minus 15 or minus 17 range. Right. So below 10 to the minus 13, you have to develop your own clock systems that is much more precise and And we could be delicate. proud that we have developed indigenous clock of that precision. Absolutely. I think this is really, really a national facility and we should be proud of that. And that's very important also that our ancestors have done that and thought about it. How important this clock or maintenance of time to the accuracy that we are talking about is both in terms of application and in terms of fundamental research? Uh, yeah, so that I was telling in the first sentence that this has Im uh, importance in both in the technology as well as in the fundamental standards. In the technology, let's say, launching a, uh, or let's say, accurate targeting. So, let's say there is a aircraft from enemy's country and you are sending your missiles and it has to be accurately uh, meet them at the same point. And for these space-time things, that depends on how, how accurately can you measure the timing, your time systems. So, this is one example. The other examples are like uh, putting satellites in proper, in correct orbits. We or, have, or GPS. GPS communication GPS systems, system high speed in. communication system like 4G is coming yeah. to tomorrow, there will be much more uh, fast communication systems will be coming. So these are the applications in technological sectors and there are n number of more applications. And in scientific sectors, there are many fundamental signs that can be probed only if you have very precise timing systems and there you require actually much better frequency standards compared to one part in 10 to the power 18 in many cases. And one example is we know from our basic physics that fine structure constant written by alpha is a constant over time. Right. But theoretically, due to the relativistic effects which has been predicted, it's also not a constant. It's changing over time with very, very small variations. And that very, very small variations can be measured if there are many clocks in the inter internationally, there are many accurate clocks and they have to intercompare very properly. The another example is Lorentz invariance violation, whether it violates or not violates. There are again many uh, examples in scientific sectors also. So and there are a lot of questions that probably will be solved only if we have very accurate, very and accurate time. clocks. Exactly. Why is it difficult? How do you measure time by looking at 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 a ion or atom or molecule? Hmm. How do you do that? Yeah. Why is it important? Why is not mechanical clock as accurate? So the mechanical clock, this is, uh, see the advantage of atoms or ions are they are most unperturbed systems. For example, a mechanical clock, it has a quartz crystal, which is good, but not as good as atom because they are perturbed by, let's say, humidity, by temperature, by several other things. It also depends on how the uh, you 
build these quartz uh, crystals depends on batch to batch there is a di uh, difference right. but for atoms you, if you take the atom to moon or to anywhere else the atom is same atom it will be unchanged so the most unperturbed system. But the temperature and pressure may have. Yes, a... exactly. So the temperature or electric field or magnetic field will affect the atom, but the atomic structure is known so well that you can calculate how much will be the change, and you can uh, see if you can correct for that. But for crystals, you cannot do that. So what essentially uh, you're saying is that scientists have to go to subatomic level in order to achieve those accuracies. Yes. Uh, I'll have to take a break at the moment. The discussion is very interesting at the moment. Don't go anywhere. We'll come back soon. <music> Welcome back. Dr. Dave, we were discussing that the time is extremely important for any country to progress. How do you compare India with China? Uh, the kind of clock that you are developing, uh, have uh, they been developed by other countries including China? Yeah, so the fountain clocks which already we have in the country, they, this kind of fountain clocks are also available in other developed countries or developing countries, for example, uh, Japan, then Germany, France, USA, Canada, uh, China. Uh, so, the way to interlink between say, clocks in different countries currently is done through satellite links. It's a two-way time transfer procedure. A much better uh, technique would be to use optical fibers, to put optical fibers between these intercontinents, which is very difficult and ma many times it's impossible because sea is there in middle. But uh, in future, probably that would be the way to go. In the Europe, there are already optical fiber links among the European countries. In, in, in uh, USA and Canada, they already have the optical fiber links. In India, we don't have any activity at this moment. But and would you say that many more clocks need to be developed and placed at various levels within the country? Yeah, absolutely. And linked with each other? Absolutely. That would be much, much better scenario. So, for example, to keep in that view, in NPL also, we are developing another fountain clock in uh, apart from this optical frequency standard also. But it would be much more nicer if we have more clocks in different parts of the country at different heights. Let's say at different, the, the, the clock accuracy changes with the height from the, uh, from the sea level. It's called gravitational redshift. So it would be much more nicer if we have more clocks at different heights and at different places. Um. How do you see, as a young scientist, how do you see the future of physics in particular and science in general in the country? Oh, I see it's a very, I mean, the, the, the progress is, is very rapid. There are many good things coming up. Uh, so there, I expect that in few years from now, let's say five years from now, we will have a much better scenario in science in the world standard. But, but some people are very disturbed that uh, budgets have been cut and all that. Yeah, that's always true. I mean, you can always add more sugar and it will be much more sweeter. That's the case always. But on the other hand, apart from this budget cut, I'd like to address one more issue. And that is a coherence. I mean, we mostly in India, the science are going on in national labs, government funded labs instead of the private labs. So there we have to work the But that is the scenario across the globe, that science, especially basic sciences, fundamental mostly, and mostly the case. applied to a large extent is, is funded by the government, even is, in US. Yes, yes, that it is, is funded by the, the government. But what I was trying to say that we have to work two different people, one is administration and other one is scientist. So what I see many times a coherence between administration and scientists, this is missing. And Sometimes we see there is no mutual respect from each other. It's from scientist to the administration as well as from the other side. It's not, I am not saying only about the one sided, it's both sided. So if there is a mutual understanding and mutual respect, I think the short amount of budget can be also used very effectively. Even if there is not a infinite availability. You've raised point. a very, very important point, which no other scientist has raised, that there has to be a synchronization between the administration, scientific administration and scientific community. Yeah, the point, so that there is uh, a coherence yeah. and we move together 
towards together. objective. For example, let's say as a scientist, I have no expertise in public dealing. I don't know how to uh, how to basically run a file. Yeah, but. Uh, on the other hand, as an administrative people, they have much better ideas on public dealing and how to handle these kind of questions. Or how to handle the finances. How to handle the finances. So if we work together, I think the Indian science will have a different slope, which will be much, much faster compared to the current uh, slope, even if there is not enough money available. Money is never enough. That's a message to most science administrators and policy makers from a young scientist. You got this award, Young Scientist Award. How excited were you when you got this? And how excited was your team? Yeah, my team, uh, team members are, actually I would like to thank all the team members because this is a joint effort. This is not only my work alone. So thanks to all of them. Uh, yeah, everyone is excited, but now I feel I have a much a different level of pressure because uh, I have, I was awarded this to build the fundamentals uh, of this clock, but now I have to really build and deliver this clock. So this is much more pressure I have on <laughs> my, my shoulder. So with the award, the pressure has gone yeah, up. Yeah, which is good. I mean, I would like to take the pressure. Very good. Uh, oh, congratulations Thank and you. best wishes for the future work. Uh, I would like to ask you the question which normally I ask in the beginning, that do you, when you look back at your teachers, school, college, would you like to uh, uh, relate some story which was a turning point in your life? Yeah, I think um, uh, I met one teacher during my uh, bachelor's level, Dr. Jitendra Nath Nandi, and he motivated me quite a bit to come to the uh, research. And also, apart from that, there are a few family members, apart from my parents and my wife, but there are also my cousin, brother, who motivated me a lot uh, to, to go in for research, you could have go gone to, to, to you wanted to research. become a doctor. Yeah, actually right. I mean, <laughs> during my school days, I was very much interested in biology and I wanted to be a medical doctor with surgeon doctor, but uh, I was not able to break the medical entrance exam in West Bengal. So then I thought of taking uh, physics as a career. And then when I took physics as a career, there are a few people, including my cousin brothers and friends and etc who motivated me quite a bit to come into the research. Anyway, would you, would you like to sign off by giving a message to younger generation? Uh, yeah, maybe. Actually, uh, now uh, when I joined at NPL, I have chance to uh, work with Indians, uh, to students basically. Uh, so now what I see, they're very intelligent. All these young students after they are uh, freshers from after MSc or master degree, they are coming, they're very intelligent. But many times I see they are trying to find out some immediate solutions rather than uh, trying to go into deeper in detail and trying to understand these things, which is probably not very good in long term. People Jugar say, doesn't work. Yes, exactly. In That's the science. point. So this word Jugar doesn't work in science. You have to understand it may take a little bit longer time, but that is the way to do science. Jugar is not the way to do science. So what is the message in the end that you have to work consistently? Do not think that results will come fast. Yes, yes, that's the, that's the message. Like you have to work consistently and you have to do hard work. You have to find the main reason why that is the case. And then you have to solve that. Only solving by doing some bits and pieces or by doing internet search is not the research. Thank you very much. May I on your behalf, uh, Promise our viewers that you will be happy to answer questions in your area or any question they, sure, that they absolutely. have. Sure, absolutely. Write to us if you have any question or query. Our email address is yorekarstv at gmail.com. Thank you very much, Dr. Dev. Thank you. For coming and giving us so much of time.